so I have Paulo uh, Fergo, Fer, Fergo, Fig Ardo, Ferguardo. Paulo, uh, we got Tierman coming on too. This is the, you know, as important as Brexit was to 2016 to the Trump win, so the Brazil vote is to the midterm elections uh, that are going to take place on the 8th. We have followed this closely. We're huge supporters of, uh, of, of uh, Bolsonaro uh, in the Bolsonaro movement, but we're very disturbed by what we've been hearing about the Supreme Court, uh, people getting involved in, in these issues of voter integrity. Can you just tell our audience exactly what's going on? Well, it's hard to overstate the importance of this election, Steve. Uh, we're talking about the future of the of, of the whole Latin America, to be honest, and uh, with a lot of effects to the United States as well. Brazil is deciding right now on on this Sunday if it's going to re-elect President Bolsonaro or if it's going to elect again former President Lula, who is a socialist from the Workers' Party, uh, three times convicted for corruption. Uh, who was freed by his friends on the Supreme Court uh, and pretty much got away with all the charges, but uh, but still three times convicted by several courts. So and, and Brazil is on on it's, the country is very divided right now. So it's it's fifty fifty, I'd say. Paulo, is it is he a socialist or is he? A, I I think he's a Marxist. I mean, he was in league with the Chinese Communist Party. And he has sold out Brazil before, particularly on the commodity side to the Chinese Communist Party. One of the reasons he was caught for corruption was just outrageous behavior. Is your assessment that Lula is, because we think he's a transnational criminal like many of the people that are communists, do you view him as a socialist or do you view him as a communist? Well, it's the, the line is not always very clear, Steve. Uh, we, we can say that he, uh, during his term and during his, his party's uh, uh, administration, what happens that Brazil uh, got really close to China. Brazil always had uh, the United States as its number one partner um, throughout this, uh, the whole history of the country. And in the mid 2000s, with the rise of commodities and, and the China boom, Brazil, uh, China became the number one partner of Brazil. So Brazil became very close to China. Uh, a lot of partnerships were uh, were signed. and But also Lula had a vital role and financing uh, other socialist countries in Latin America. So he gave a bunch of money uh, to uh, Castro, still st was still Castro family in Cuba uh, with the More Doctors program. Um, he financed the construction of the Muriel port in Cuba as well, gave a bunch of money to Venezuela, the subway system in Caracas, uh, and money to Bolivia and money to Ecuador, a lot of money came from Brazil to these countries, and including countries in Africa, and money that's very hard to track because Brazil still has some solid uh, institutions that pretty much track the money, so it has it has some accountability against corruption, but once the money is sent abroad, we have no way to track it. So Lula helped finance all these countries uh, with uh, Brazilian taxpayers' money. Paulo, let me come back to you. Can you can you walk our audience through exactly what uh, what um, Matthew was just talking about about this incident that actually led to gunfire? Because I want to use it as an example of kind of the overreach of the of the judicial branch down there in the Supreme Court. Because I don't think our our audience kind of looks at this in American terms. They don't understand that you have a much more activist judiciary in Brazil. Oh yeah, well, and and things are happening so fast today. The biggest scandal is not even that. Is that be, they, this happened on on Sunday, and we thought this was going to dominate the the news cycle for for a while. But now, uh, yesterday, this and this is ongoing. This is still being developed. The story under development that um, the Bolsonaro's campaign found out that the Supreme Electoral Court was uh, actually favoring Lula's campaign. Um, with more ads than they were supposed to, to to have, because in Brazil, differently differently from the U.S., the all the campaign ads are paid by by the by the public by by the taxpayers. So we finance the campaigns, and in, in on the on the runoff, it's supposed to go 50-50, 50 percent Bolsonaro, 50 percent Lula. But uh, Bolsonaro's campaign audited uh, the, the the spots that were being aired, and they found out 
that Lula was having, they, Lula's campaign had only on the last two weeks, uh, almost 200,000 uh, more spots on radios that they were supposed to, more than Bolsonaro had. And, and this is a big scandal. Uh, today, the Supreme Electoral Court fired uh, the employee who was in charge of that. And this is dominating this, the news cycle. And this is just today. So on Sunday, what Matthew was uh, talking about is that a, a former leader, a former congressman and leader of uh, one party in Brazil, supporter of uh, Bolsonaro, not a close supporter, but supporter of Clo uh, Bolsonaro, a conservative guy, he was uh, he 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 said some very hard things about one of the Supreme Court justices, a lady. Uh, he called her uh, uh, well some words that I can't say here on air, uh, not appropriate. Uh, and because of that, uh, a Demorais, the the justice, the president of the Superior Electoral Court, uh, issued an arrest warrant against him. He was already on house arrest. Uh, for uh, because he said bad things against the court, which was totally illegal, but he did it anyway. And now he was on house arrest. So Morais sent uh, federal agents to his house to take him to a regular uh, to jail, to, to prison. And uh, so this guy is, this, I'm talking about a 70 year old man. He responded with an AR-15 uh, and shot back uh, the police officers, which I'm not sure were police officers because uh, they were following rules that were illegal. So I'm not sure the police is still the police if they're not following the rule of law. But anyways, uh, he shot back. He threw uh, three uh, uh, grenades, not 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 frag grenades, but uh, like light grenades, smoke grenades against the federal police officers. He ended up uh, he ended up being arrested. Uh, but this dominated the news cycle for a long time. We thought that this would have a big impact on the polls, but it didn't. So right now the polls are showing the polls that overstated Lula by three points and understated Bolsonaro by 10 points uh, are showing Lula ahead around seven points. Other polls that were more precise are showing ties. And I have access to the internal polls and they are also showing a tie with a Bolsonaro a little bit ahead, but everything is still very, very open. Uh, the country is very divided. And I, I, I'd say I've never seen, I've been covering uh, elections for a long time in Brazil and in the US, and I've never seen anything like this. This is, the, the country is very divided. People are nervous. Uh, it's, it's hard. What, tell me what the division is. Is it between nationalist and populist versus globalist? Or what is this? You know, they say it's very evenly tied. Matthew, who's got pretty good sense and thinks he thinks Bolsonaro may be up. Uh, there's obviously tremendous international interest in this from the party of Davos, from all the elite media. I mean, Brazil is something they're maniacally focused on. What is, uh, we got a couple of minutes left. Just for our audience, what is that divide? Is part of it the fact that they hate the fact that a big, portion of uh, Bolsonaro's support, President Bolsonaro's support, is made up of evangelical Christians, sir? Yeah, Bolsonaro is very much like Donald Trump. He's a nationalist, he's a populist, he has support of most of the Christians in the country, the evangelicals. Uh, so Bolsonaro is very much like Trump. So Lula, on the other hand, Lula was, was thrown under the bus by the establishment uh, until 2016, 2018. Uh, and then they noticed that uh, Lula was the only candidate that could defeat Bolsonaro in an election. So that's when the Supreme Court um, invalidated all of his trials and the the media pretty much uh, rebranded him as a, as a candidate that was honest and just, all the whole establishment decided to forget everything he has done. So it was pretty much a, I've never seen a propaganda machine so powerful, uniting all the artists, all the uh, academia, universities, um, of course, the mainstream media and the financial sector. Everyone went and started siding with Lula. Remember, most of these agents were criticizing Lula a few years before, but they completely shifted their positions just because Lula was the only one that could possibly 
defeat Bolsonaro. So it became very clear that to the establishment, the number one goal was to get rid of Bolsonaro no matter what. And they could they could dialogue. They could have a, a good relationship with Lula. So everyone, the whole establishment now is united uh, and, and with with Lula. And Bolsonaro has the people, has the, the, the blue collar workers, the 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 the, the country people, the the people from the uh, uh, agricultural sector, everyone is siding with Bolsonaro, the, the regular people, the workers, the regular worker, and the establishment is supporting Lula. So that's the way the country is divided right now. Uh, how do people follow you on social media? How do they get more to more of your writings? You're a journalist who followed this for a long time. I want people to get access to you. We're going to be given, doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this through the weekend into this historic vote on uh, on Sunday. So how can how can people follow you, sir? I'm on most social media, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Getter, YouTube. They can follow me at, at Rio P. Figueiredo, at a spell it, uh, F-I-G-U-E-I-R-E-D-O, Rio P. Figueiredo. Uh, it's my last name. It's hard to, to pronounce, I know. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> You are one of the great, uh, you're one of the great heroes and great patriots down there. We're really honored to have you here in the war room. Look forward to having you back. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Stephen.